and welcome to Just One More Watch. Now, I've admitted it already, perhaps I picked up one too many watches for my personal collection at the turn of the year. What with the Saab, the Sarks, the Seiko Compressor, the Braun Digital, whatever happened to that one? Stay tuned to find out. It got a bit difficult to do them all justice with fully comprehensive reviews, which is why I'm getting around to them now. Same goes for this the Oris Big Crown Point of Date 80th Anniversary Edition in bronze. Perhaps not the smartest of me to pick this one up on a leather strap in the height of Sydney summer, but now the weather has cooled down considerably, still in a t-shirt though, mind you, the Oris is getting a lot more wrist time and I thought it was a suitable point to come back with a comprehensive review. Now, it would be deeply patronizing of me to suggest that a watch company that has been making watches continuously since 1904 was somehow finding its feet. And yet, Oris really does seem to be kicking some major goals in the market at the moment. Not least of which with the 65, my beloved Oris 65. I've gone through three of them, as you know. They launched that model in 2015. There's dozens of them available now, and it's got some rave reviews. Similarly, this big crown. If you don't fancy bronze, there's some other stainless steel models. I went to an Oris sponsored Australian watch forum get together a couple of weeks ago, and I was able to try on a whole bunch of Oris and was thoroughly impressed. New Diver 65 Chrono, I tried on the Aquis 43, the Aquis 39.5, Aquis GMT, and of course, a couple of other big crowns. Cross your fingers, I might be able to persuade Oris Australia to give me a couple of those on loan in the future. But back to the watch in hand, this one, my bronze big crown. Let's flip the camera and give it the review that it deserves, finally. So better late than never then, the Oris Big Crown in bronze. Big crown, big box. This isn't a Chinese special today, so you'd be expecting some substantial packaging and you wouldn't be disappointed. All just cardboard, but nicely done. Now in the bottom of here, it's a different package from the 65s that I have opened for you in the past. It doesn't come in the heritage box, but you do get the nice, big, uh, chunky justification of price tag detailing the international service centers and a product manual, which of course I have no intention of ever reading. Two years warranty with all of these Oris, but you can extend that. If you log your watch, if you register it online, they add an extra year and I have done that with both of my Oris. So a big box containing a small box containing a watch. Now you've all seen this one before. I did a double unboxing featuring this one a number of months ago. I'm gonna pop up some video footage from that unboxing video, kind of a before and after if you see what I mean. That one was fresh out the packaging. It's gonna be really interesting to see how this watch compares, just how that bronze has patinaed since early February when I first got this one. So I'm gonna start by talking a little bit about this model and the history behind it, the 80th anniversary, etc., etc. Then all the usual good stuff, dimensions, specifications, high, low, indoor, outdoor, wrist shots, a loom video, and I'm gonna pop this one on the time grapher. And will wonders never cease? I'm gonna learn another new facet of my video editing software, and I'm gonna do a bit of split screen with some footage of what this watch looks like now and what it looked like back in February. So this is the Oris Big Crown pointer date. Pretty self-explanatory, both of those features. It's a pilot's watch, it's from their pilot's range, one of four ranges by which they kind of cluster their watches. Big crowns, obviously ideal on pilot watches so the pilots can operate them without taking their gloves off, and it's legible, it's got those big, nice clear Arabics. Clearly a kind of super old-fashioned retro style, this one. Now the 80th anniversary because Oris introduced the pointer date in 1938, so this watch actually was released towards the end of 2018. They just scraped in, I think they released this one in November last year to commemorate that and the fact that they have been making pointer dates continuously for 80 years. Now I went for the bronze, I'm a big fan of the bronze. Bronze and green, really nice, kind of sophisticated, uh, elegant, deeply retro color scheme here, especially when combined with that lovely brown strap. But there are a whole bunch of others available. In stainless steel, they do a gorgeous red one, green ones, dark blue, black, etc., etc. If you're over the bronze fad, if you consider it to be a fad and you're through with it, then you should probably look at one of those instead. 40 mil in diameter. 12 mil thick, though a chunk of that is from the double dome sapphire crystal. 48 mil lug tip to lug tip, 20 mil lug width, 
tapering down to 14. So down to 14, back up to 16 for that supplied bronze buckle. And on this leather strap, this is the one it came with. I can't see myself changing it, though it is fraying a little bit there. Expect a few moans and niggles with this one actually a little later on. This one weighs in at 75 grams. I will not be moaning about the finish on that case though. Some of you will be recoiling in horror wondering why I didn't buy the stainless steel. Others will be thoroughly appreciative of that subtle but distinct patina that's developing on the side of the case already. All right, let's try and go for this split screen. What do you think there? That was it in February. I think it was like February the 6th that I got this one. Here we are in June the 8th, only a few months later. So it's had a bit of risk time this honest. Not a huge amount, but enough exposure to the elements, to moisture in the air and to my fingers touching it repeatedly that it's gone that kind of gorgeous color beginning to fleck and mottle beautifully really really nice very simple case we've got a kind of sunken coin edge bezel there just a solid case and then stainless steel case back i'll show you that in just a second i'm looking forward to seeing how this one develops over the next six months or so as well zoomed in on the dial and it is a piece of double dome sapphire crystal as i said covering beautifully distorted there at the edges just a little step to it you can see around where my finger is there. I think it's just about perfect. And a very kind of vintage style dial. Now Pilot's Watch, you're gonna have those big clear Arabics, all just printed on there, Oris logo, big crown automatic being concealed by the cathedral hands at the moment. The magic Swiss made words either side of the six and all of these other details just printed on as well. So because it's the pointer date, the red tip pointer hand pointing out towards the eight at the moment, that pushes the minute track in a little bit. And you've got the date in one to 31 around the outer edge, but no cut out for the date at three, no cut out at six, or even down at the 4.30. So a really nice, balanced, harmonious, symmetrical dial. I really do enjoy it. Love that kind of retro styled Arabic there at four as well. It really kind of sets the whole thing off. Great color scheme too in that matte green color. So Cathedral Hands, again, something I haven't had in my collection before. Again, that kind of bronze style gilt, very simple needle second hand pushing out just to the edge of that minute track as it should be. The only splash of color other than the green is the red pointer date, kind of cupping the bottom of the date there, eight being today's. Pretty much just what you'd expect from this retro style pilot, a beautiful looking dial. So if I flip the watch over, you can see through the display case back the Oris 754, essentially a Salita 200 base movement with a very attractive kind of signature red Oris rotor. Now this watch does have a screw down crown, but only five bar 50 meters of water resistance. Stainless steel case back. You never see a bronze watch with a bronze case back. They all tend to be stainless steel. Uh, you don't get those green stains on the back of your arm and you don't get the allergic reactions that many people I'm sure would have with a bronze case back. Let's pop this one on the time grapher, see how it gets on. Yeah, so uh, this one does okay for itself, doesn't it? Stated accuracy, these movements is minus 20 to plus 20, but in reality, once you've got them on wrist, I've had really, really good results from the Salita base movements in all of my 65s, this one especially. The rest have been running about plus five to plus seven very consistently. This one coming in just about bang on. That's a great result and it adjusts just as you would expect a standard three hand plus date. Effectively, it's just like having the date wheel sitting above the dial rather than underneath it. You unscrew that crown, you can roll it forward to wind, one pull, adjust the date. Now, if I roll this one there, you can see it moving from eight to nine to 10, etc., on to 11. Next pull out will adjust the time. Movement hacks, hand winds. So it's 26 joules, hacking hand winding movement, running at 28,800 vibrations per hour, as you saw on the time grapher. Very smooth, eight ticks per second of the second hand, so you get that smooth high beat sweep. And that's it, sitting on top of my seven inch wrist. I've been wearing this one kind of like a little retro dress watch, I suppose. You can wear a watch any style you want, regardless of whether it's a pilot or a diver. I don't care for those rules particularly, but like I say, if I've been getting dressed up and my outfit has suited these color tones, then I've been wearing this one and really enjoying it on a night out.
Now, 40 mil, not super large for a pilot style watch. They all tend to be a little bit bigger than this. You can indeed get this one in a 36 though. Perhaps if you've got smaller wrists or perhaps for ladies who like this look. The 40 mil, bit of curvature to the lugs, kind of a sweet spot for me. Now, a slightly extended bit of outdoor footage. You get this watch with the bronze, the green, the honey colored strap out into the wilds and it just looks beautiful. Those color tones, you know I always use kind of plants and grass and so on as my backdrop for these videos. This watch just looks like it belongs there. It really does look like part of nature. Bit more footage there of that domed sapphire crystal as well and some close-ups on that gorgeous bronze case. It just looks superb outside. And like I said, I expect this one to continue to change and develop, but it'll just keep heading towards that deep, rich, dark golden color as the bronze ages. So I'm very happy with it. I love it. I can see myself keeping this one for quite a while, but I do have a couple of moans and niggles today. That strap has started to fray just over the last month or so. No problems with this one, but that one has frayed. Strap, apart from that, it's been really quite nice. It's aging nicely, it's got quick release spring bars, and that little bronze buckle also just aging a treat. However, I'm gonna have to do something with that, glue it or, or whatever, before it starts getting much worse. And you wouldn't believe it, but that is mineral glass. I have no idea who decided that it was all right to put a piece of mineral glass on a $2,000 watch. I mean, Seiko get away with it on stuff like the Saab, they put Sapphire on the front and Hardlex on the back, but that's a $350 watch, not a watch that's got an RRP of 2,000 US dollars. Not sure who at Oris thought that it was okay. I notice it's only on this bronze 40. I'm not quite sure why, but the other stainless steel models have a sapphire sandwich. Perhaps they'll be upgrading this one. Can't really see that it was any retro nod considering they've used sapphire on the front. And the loom, it starts out really promisingly. This is it in real time. You've got plenty on the hands, plenty on those little hour markers, and even a slightly different color tone on the Arabics. It really looks great when you turn off the light. But if we speed up the footage a little bit, you see that it doesn't really last all that long. The cathedral hands have got plenty on them. They hang on in there, which I guess is what you really want, but it would have been nicer. You know I'm a loom pig, I love this stuff. It would have been nicer if it lasted longer than it does. So the price, I alluded to it earlier, 2000 US is the RRP, 2700 Aussie. Although with Oris, if you shop around, you should be able to do a touch better than that. This one isn't a limited edition. There's no limited number stamped on the back and there's no suggestion that they'll be cutting this from their range at any time. So if you do like it, you don't necessarily have to, to rush out and buy one tomorrow. The few that I've seen on the used market are going pretty close to that retail price. So solid residual value as well from Oris, which is, which is good to see. So overall, a couple of little moans and niggles aside, I really do like this one. It's kind of retro done right and provides a kind of left field dress piece. I know it's a pilot's watch and it's made of bronze, but I've really been enjoying wearing it as a kind of dress up going out piece, something a bit different from the norm. So there you have it, better late than never. I finally got around to reviewing my Oris Big Crown in bronze. After six months, it's developing some lovely patina. The leather strap still smells great and I'm looking forward to getting it out and about more during Sydney's freezing cold winter. It's 16 degrees centigrade outside today. I can't believe it. Leave me a comment, let me know what Oris you'd like to see on the channel next and I'll use it as leverage with my contact at Oris Australia. Thanks for watching, see you in the next video.